Hey guys, how you doing today? It's Steve on the Guru Brew. I wanted to do a little bit of monitor repair today. If you do computer repair, you know that these fail often. And there's particularly one reason why they fail the most, and it's because of these cheap capacitors. You know, a monitor of this size may contain six to eight of these capacitors and they're under a lot of stress and heat and so that's usually the first thing that goes especially since they put cheap caps in these now there's a, a good way to test these a lot of times you can look and just see if they're bulging at the top and often there'll be vent holes where the the uh, gases can escape if these have a problem and you can see stuff coming out of the vents but not always i wanted to show you this meter this is called an ESR meter for measuring capacitors. And this one's made by Peak, and I'll put a link in the description to my Amazon store if you want to get your own. These are very useful for checking capacitors. And if you're doing any kind of board repair at all, this is a must in repair to check caps quickly. A lot of times you can check them in circuit Sometimes you have to take the cap out, and I'll show you an instance of that when we get working on this. But for the most part, you can check them in the circuit board without taking them out. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started with our monitor repair, and let's look for some bad caps. That's coming up. plug it in let's have a look there we go just for a brief moment there So that's what it does. Here's a first look inside this monitor, and I want to apologize in advance for my voice. I woke up to uh, finish this video, and my voice isn't coming back today, so I'm going to go ahead and do the video anyway, and I apologize if you can't understand me. So anyway, inside this monitor, there's basically just two circuit boards, and this board right here with all the large capacitors on it is the power board. And the little board over here controls and uh, does all the signal processing and it sends it to the LCD monitor. And the power board is usually our problem. And also connections, you know, like there's a wire, it goes from here to here. And also the back lamps, which are here. There's four sets of wires and we're gonna have to take those off to get the circuit board out. But um, generally, the power board will have bad caps. You can see there's a couple little caps on this one. They're probably fine. It's probably over here. And the reason why is this board generates quite a bit of heat. It's responsible for the power for the display board, as well as it supplies power for these two inverters, which power the backlights the tubes inside the screen anyway 
I'm looking down in this power board for any signs of problems and the first thing I look at is the capacitors and I usually look at the big ones first and I look on the top for any bulging see this X through the middle that's actually a vent and if this decides to build up pressure because it's defective it'll blow out this vent so it'll prevent an explosion of your capacitor they used to make these sealed and they'll actually blow anyway um, I can't physically see anything wrong with these caps and usually you can but uh, of course I'm doing this video so you can't so I'm gonna have to take this board out and we'll get our tester out and we'll check these these caps and I'll probably check this one too although this is the main mains filter and uh, it's usually fine this is a really large value 450 volt one there so anyway I'm gonna save my voice and just continue to roll I'm gonna I'm gonna mark these wires pull out these boards and put the tester on them and I'll be back with narration with that so let's get this board out of here Okay, so here's the power supply that I just took out and I'm interested like I said before in these caps right here there's four of them there's actually this big one too but that's usually not bad that's uh, on the mains for filtering we'll check it but uh, chances are that one's fine now there's no noticeable bulging and I looked at it with a magnifying glass and I still didn't see any so we're gonna go ahead and use our ESR meter to check them and let's talk about this for just a minute this is the peak ESR meter and it's their better one it's the ESR70 and I'll leave a link in the description where you can get this now you can check capacitors on the board without taking them out if you want and it's perfectly fine to do that or you can do it with them out of course now I will tell you though even with um, it able to do in circuit if any of these capacitors are in parallel it'll give a wrong reading and you'll have to take it out but it kind of warns you but uh, just be aware that it can't do all circumstances in fact these caps um, I've done these kind of boards before and I know that these these uh, are in parallel in certain places so we'll have to check them and then probably pull a couple out to test again Anyway, I also wanted to tell you that uh, I discharged this cap with, a, with a, a, a resistor across the terminals to get the charge out of it. I don't want to damage my meter. This will, um, this will uh, remove a charge from a capacitor, but only to a certain point. We don't want to blow up our meter. <clears throat> anyway... Um, what I like to do is mark these, you know, like A, B, C, D, and I've done that, and I've followed the, the legs on the other side using a flashlight, and I marked them where they are. So that first cap is right here, and there's the legs for it. Here's B, here's C, and then D's over here. So what you do is you take your meter, your ESR meter, Scoot this over so you can see that and turn it on. Now this meter has a, a buzzer, but I disconnected it because the dog hates it. I don't know why, but anyway. So to test 
All you do is take your probes and touch the capacitor legs like this and just hold it and wait. So it says that it's, the cap is uh, 1,688 microfarad and the ESR reading is 0 0.02. And they give you a chart in the book when you buy this meter that's here. And um, so what you do is you look at the value on your cap and this one happens to be a 1,500 uh, 10 volt. And this says as long as I'm under 0.20 ohms and I'm only at 0.02 ohms I'll be fine so if my if my number is less than this but you know I should be fine and generally you know the number will be a lot higher if there's a problem let's go ahead and check the next cap so I take my probes make sure you can see that Pull it down. Oh, it just turned off. There we go. Analyzing. And there's the reading. So it says it's uh, 1,806. And um, that seems wrong to me. Way wrong. B. This is a 1000 UF cap, and it's saying that it's an 1800. So this is one of those instances where I'm going to pro probably have to pull that one out to get a good reading because um, it must be in parallel with another one. Now it does give me an ESR reading here, and it's 0.02, the same as the other one. But uh, to really be sure, I need to pull that cap. Let's check the next one, see. Now, right here, it says in circuit slash leaky. And if you look at the book, um, it says to take it out and check it, or the cap might be leaky. So right away, that suspect, that, that one I labeled C. Let's check this one at D. It's over here. All right. Right there, it's kind of hidden. And again, I'm getting that message, in circuit, leaky. And let's look at the values here. Um, interesting. Um, D and C are the same values, 470 UF at 25 volts. So those will be the first I'll change. Let's take out these two here and test them again out of circuit. They appear to be goofy. So I'm going to take this solder wick and I'm just going to suck that solder up. So it'll be easier to get that cap out of there. Now, I do have a solder removal tool, but I've got just one of the plunger kinds. And, uh, you know, here it is here. And I don't like these that much. I like the ones that have the built-in heater because this one here, you know, you get in there and you heat it up. And then you're, you got to hurry up and put this over the top and suck it. And a lot of times... You know, by the time you get it over it and push the button, it's cool again and, you know, it doesn't do anything. But those other ones that have the tip that heats, those are way more ideal. Anyway, let's see if that'll come out now. I'm just going to wiggle it here a little bit and heat it. But 
There we go. There's our first cap pulled. So this cap is labeled 470 UF, uh, 25 volt. Let's get our meter and read it. So it says it's a 436, not a 470, so it's kind of underrated. The SR reading is good, but uh, that 436.3, that's a little bit low. This is supposed to be, like I said, a 470. So maybe that's why we're having, you know, intermittent problems with the LCD staying on. Um, this one doesn't have enough capacity. Let's check that again. Yeah, 433. Let's switch our leads around. It shouldn't matter, but let's try it. Yeah, 433. So this one's a little bit low. There's one more, the same value. It's uh, the one over here. I think it's this one here. Let me go ahead and pull that one out real quick as well. So this is the same value as that other one that I just took out, 470 UF at 25 volts. Let's go ahead and check this. <clears throat> Boy, my voice is uh, annoying. It doesn't hurt, it just it's, uh, messed up. All right, let's see what we get here. So this one's underrated too, look at that, 435. These aren't even close to 470. I mean, I guess they are, but geez. The ESR is good, but that 435, that's not that great. Uh, it's supposed to be 475, right? Yeah. 470. All right, might as well keep going and pull a couple more. I'll do those off camera, I won't bore you. Okay, I just took out my third cap and here it is. It, uh, it's 100 UF at 25 volts. Watch this. The ESR is zero. The cap is correct, 954, because it's a 1000. But uh, yeah, zero. Let's turn the leads around just to make sure. Try it again here. So the ESR is like so low that. Uh, very suspicious. I think we got a bad cap on our hands here. Hmm. Definitely going to replace that one. I'm going to take out another one. Okay, I just took out my last one. And uh, this is a 1500 UF, um, like 10 volt. So it's quite a bit under 13, 1380. Check it again. Last time I was getting an ESR reading of zeros. Yep, ESR is zero. And the rating is not even close to 1500. Um, I think I'm gonna try to replace all these caps. I think it would be simplest. I'll have to look and see what I have, but uh, these all seem kind of squirrely to me. I'll go ahead and replace them all. All 
Okay, so I'm looking around trying to find some cap replacements, and these are always nice here. Um, these are these were pulled from a motherboard, and these are the 105 degree C caps, and I've tested these, and they're all really good. And these are 1500 uh, UF at 16 volts. So I'm going to use these. They're about the same footprint. They're a little bit bigger, but uh, bigger is better. You can go up in voltage and up in capacity, but never down. So if this requires a 1000, it'll be okay to put a 1500 in there, you know, as long as it's bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and solder these in. Make sure you get your polarity right, the black with the negative. Just pop them in and solder them in. Well, there it is. I put all the new caps in, and they're all bigger than what was originally in there. Here's the old caps here. And uh, so hopefully this will work. So I got all these caps just out of one motherboard. There's four, five, eight. Eight caps. And if you were to go buy these at Radio Shack or something, you'd probably pay four fifty dollars a piece. And these are the 105 degree, too. So if you got old motherboards laying around, it uh, pays to take out, you know, parts. So I got like 20 bucks in parts here for free. Anyway, let's go ahead and check this big cap and uh, just be sure that uh, it's okay because I haven't done that yet. Let's see, what is this? It's a 100 UF 450 volt and it's high because it's, uh, you know, the input filter. I expect this will be fine. It's coming in at 97.3 with the ESR of 0.5. So if I look on my chart, let's see. Um, yeah, I'm under uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So we're good on that. I, th I think we should go ahead and uh, clean up this board. I'll take a toothbrush, you know, and clean up where I soldered. Maybe a little alcohol and I'll put this back in and we'll we'll see if it did any good hope so Look at that, it's working. I'm gonna leave this on for a while and make sure it's okay. I would have to adjust my resolution here, but uh, everything seems to be working and good. So here's your problem, four bad caps. This isn't unusual for caps to be bad in a monitor. So I'm going to let this run for probably a half hour and then I'll put the bezel back on and snap it together and uh, go for that. Use it. Let's go out for some final thoughts. So that is it for the LCD monitor repair and the little introduction on the ESR meter. Again, I'll leave a link in the description to my Amazon page if you'd be kind enough to go there if you plan on purchasing one of these. This cost about 150 US dollars, but it'll pay itself back many times over. And here's to use caps. Again, if you find motherboards or power supplies, you can take out a lot of really nice caps that would cost you four or five dollars each if you had to buy them. 
and you can use your ESR meter to test them and make sure they're good before you save them and uh, do repairs like this with your used caps. Now if you have a paying customer I would put new caps in but this monitor is just for us around the shop here so used caps are just fine and if it goes I can repair it again and uh, so that's it if you got some use out of this video and you like it please hit that thumbs up button it helps us out a lot and leave us a comment down below your experience with fixing caps and monitors and if you think this ESR meter is a good idea so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time bye for now well here it is all put back together and it's working great I've actually got this camera connected to my Nikon camera so you can see me in here what the camera sees and I plan on mounting this up on my light rack and uh, maybe I'll film that and show that so good job monitors fixed yay